Hi, this is Brad Smith from Beersmith.com, and in this video I'm going to show you how to create a mead recipe from scratch in Beersmith 3. I'm going to start with a big fruit mead or melomel, although you can do more complex examples including those including a boil phase or hops. I'm using a no-boil method for my mine, however. From the main screen, I'm just going to kick, click on uh, Add Recipe, and I can give it a name. I'm going to call it uh, Tart Cherry Mead. And I can put the brewer in there if I want, or the maker. Uh, most importantly, I'm going to go over here to the type, and I'm going to set it to Mead, which enables a whole bunch of Mead features that are important for, the, for building the recipe. Next, I'm going to pick an equipment profile. This is going to be a standard five gallon batch of mead, which is still a pretty good amount of mead. And now I can actually start building the recipe if I want. Uh, first, I'm going to go down though and pick a style. I'm going to go with uh, Melomel, which is a fruit mead, of course. Put that in there. And now I'm going to start adding fermentables. Uh, the first fermentable, of course, is honey. I type in honey, right? And I like orange blossom honey, so I'm going to pick that. I'm going to add, let's see, 16 pounds, I think is about right for this recipe. So 16 pounds of honey. And I also need some uh, tart cherries. And I'm going, to, I'm going to go with tart cherry juice because I'm a little bit out of season for, uh, for getting the real thing. I like the Knutson juice. It's a little pricey, but uh, makes a really nice mead. So I'm going to put, uh, so I wanted to, let's see. I actually want two gallons of that, so two gallons of tart cherry juice. Enter that. So now I got 16 pounds of honey, two gallons of tart cherry juice. The next thing I need, of course, is some yeast. With my big melomels, I'm a big fan of the uh, 71B Narbonne yeast from uh, Lovlin. It's a dry yeast, uh, makes great mead though. And uh, now that I've got the yeast added, I can actually get a pretty good idea of what my original gravity and final gravity is going to be. And so this is a pretty big mead. It's a 1.144 starting gravity, 15.1% alcohol. Uh, typically, the, the 71B does ferment down about 110 points. Uh, down to 1.034 is the final gravity. And if you're working with... Um, if you're a person who actually likes to stop fermentation on their meads, you can also play with... Uh, it's a new feature in, in Beersmith 3. You can play with uh, the details of the yeast now. It has an alcohol tolerance field, which I'll highlight right here. And you can actually adjust that up or down uh, if you're somebody, for example, that may stop your, ye your mead uh, from fermenting with sorbate. So if you stop it at, say, 10% alcohol or even 6% alcohol or something like that, in order to get that residual sweetness by adding sulfites and sorbates, you can actually go in and change this field. and um, and change the alcohol percentage to, to reflect that particular case, although I don't like to do that. I like to ferment mine all the way out, and I just start with a ridiculous amount of honey instead. Uh, I like the high alcohol, big fruit meads. So I've got the basic uh, outline of the mead here done. Now I'm actually going to click over to the starter page and show you some of the new features there. So I'm working with the dry yeast here, and you can see uh, the dry yeast needed, I need about 10 grams of this. So that's actually about two packages, it turns out. These are small packs, these are wine packs. So I can go up here and add, uh, add another pack of yeast to make sure I have enough. And uh, it'll also show me right here in, in the middle my dry yeast hydration recommended. So it recommends that I use uh, 262 milliliters of water and 13.1 uh, grams of go firm, so I can measure that out or add that to the recipe if I like. But down here is one of the coolest features. Um, I can actually calculate my staggered yeast nutrient requirements for yeast, and I can either do it with a tonsa 2, which uses fermate O, or tonsa 1, uh, I'm sorry, tionsa, T-I-O-N-S-A, uh, which is the older method using fermate K. I like the new fermate O because it's organic. Um, I'm working with a low nitrogen yeast strain, just so happens 71B is a low nitrogen yeast strain. And it'll actually calculate the total amount of nutrients that are needed, as well as the individual uh, additions. Most modern mead makers, we use a combination of degassing and also a staggered nutrient addition. So it'll show me I need to add four individual additions of 6.2 grams at 24, 48, 72, and 7 days, or the one-third sugar break. It shows me where the one-third sugar break actually is. And it's kind of nice, it also calculates the percent of the overall gravity that's contributed from honey, 
And this is to avoid putting too much uh, nutrients in or too much nitrogen into your mead uh, if you're working with fruit. In this case, I am working with fruit. And then down here, there's a nice little button. I can actually just click on that button. It'll add uh, these four nutrient additions into the, into the ingredient list. And so now it says it's been added. So if I go back to the design page, you can see I've got my nutrients listed in my recipe now. And, you know, I could go in here from, and do other things. I could add clarity aids. I could add some uh, pectin, pectic enzyme, enzyme, for example. Probably a good idea when working with fruit. Um, so, you know, I've got all the, all the necessary tools and ingredients I, I need to build the recipe out. Um, I want to show you just a couple things at the bottom to clean this up and finish it up. Um, first of all, you notice the beverage color is a little bit light here, so I can pick a beverage color if I want. Pick a different color. Uh, tart cherry is probably maybe about that color. It will turn out maybe just a little darker than that. And down at the bottom, I can either carbonate it or not. Um, this one I'm going to serve probably from a keg, and I'm not going to carbonate it. And I can go down and pick a fermentation profile. I'm going to pick a uh, mead, a three-stage sort of standard, so kind of a 90-day profile, if you will, for the tart cherry mead. And that's it. Now I've got the recipe built. Um, I can click on brew steps, and it'll literally give me step-by-step -step instructions on how to do this, um, which is kind of nice. It also gives me volumes here, so I can, for example, measure my honey by volume. Uh, it's 1.33 gallons of... Uh, of honey, which makes it a little easier to measure and work with. So I can print that out and use that when I'm making my mead. Um, I can also go to the session page and do a lot of cool things over here. I can, um, you know, figure out my, it'll show me my, my total fermentable volume and weight, which is nice. So it'll give me an idea of how much more water I need to add to get to my five gallons. So it looks like I need 1.67 gallons of water. Um, there's a bunch of things here for recording, you know, my original gravity, my final gravities. There's actually a sulfite calculator over here that lets me calculate uh, sulfites if, you're, if you treat your meads, which I often do at the end with sulfites. Um, and then, of course, there's a, a nice record area down here where I can record my fermentation readings, which I usually do with meads. I usually track them pretty closely over time. And, of course, you can also go to the notes field and play with notes, and it does show you the batch age now, so I can know, you know my, my meads up to 90 days or 60 days or whatever, and it's ready to sample. Um, so you've got all those nice features built in, and I just built a, a, a very nice uh, big fruit mead. And all I need to do now is click OK to save that, and I've got it right here as a tart cherry mead, and I can share that now with my mobile version. I can copy it to the cloud. I can do all kinds of cool things, share it with my friends. Um, so that's the basic outline of how to create a mead recipe in Beersmith 3. There's a number of other features I didn't cover, like back sweetening tools and so on you can play on play with later. But those are the basic features. Uh, for more videos, as well as recipes, uh, discussions, articles, my podcast, and a 21-day free trial version of Beersmith 3, please visit my website at beersmith.com.